What is up, New Beginnings Church? Happy Friday morning to you. Thank God it's Friday. Let's do this. Let's finish strong with Philippians chapter 3. Again, this great chapter. He started with this idea of like, don't approach God in a legalistic way. Let go of your past, good or bad. Step into God's present right here, right now, because he's got a purpose for you. And then lastly, he ends on something. So if you keep reading again, it's hard to do verse by verse pure all the way through in this devotional format, but that's why I want you to read the book of Philippians on your own. If you read right after he talks about you lady laying hold of that for which Christ has laid hold of you, he's like, hey, look, some people aren't going to like it though. Some people are going to come against you. Some people are going to be um, adversarial towards you even. And so he ends the chapter with, I think, this unbelievable encouragement of hope. Watch, this is what he says. Philippians 3.20 says, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything, everybody say everything, he's going to bring everything under his control. He will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Um, You know, he ends with this idea of like, listen, if you let go of your past and you really step into your purpose, not everybody's going to be on board with that. Not everybody's going to love that. I want you to know that the Apostle Paul speaks of this, that that there is spiritual wickedness in heavenly realms that comes against us. And it's, we think it's flesh and blood. We think it's people, but there's a spirit behind that that's driving. And so, so there is an adversary to life. And so you need to know that in the midst of of any type of trial, anybody coming against the work of God that he's trying to do in your life, you can stay hopeful. Number one is this. He says this line. He goes, Jesus uh, is enabled to bring everything under his control. The first bit of encouragement that I need you to know is this. No matter what goes on in our world, in our country, in our government, in our local politics, in our... Listen to me. God has got the whole thing under control control. If it looks like it's all going bad, if it looks like it's all gone south, if, it, if we can't make any sense of it, if it's confusing to us, you have to remember that the Apostle Paul was writing this underneath unbelievable persecution. Remember, he's writing this from a prison cell. So a lot of us have the boldness and the courage to say, hey, God's got this under control when everything's going mostly good. But the faith to say it while you write this letter from a prison cell and you're awaiting your execution, that is some powerful faith. To say, look, whether they take my life or not, I don't even know. But that doesn't mean that God does not have this whole thing under control. As a matter of fact, the disciples experienced the same thing. They got into a boat with Jesus. Jesus is asleep. The storm comes. They're freaking out. They're totally afraid. They think they're going to die. They're waking up Jesus. And Jesus is like, why are you afraid? Like, I'm in the boat. And what Jesus does, he gets up and he calms the storm. And I think that the point is this, is that even when life, even when the storms seem out of control, Jesus is like, I'm never out of control. And so just recognizing that God's got everything under control. Um, The recognition that Jesus is what makes heaven heaven. It's a powerful thing. But not only is he in control, but Jesus is what makes heaven heaven. That when we get there, it's not about trying to get to Disneyland. It's about trying to reunite with our creator. It's about being with our savior. And that's what makes heaven heaven. And then the third thing I want to give you is this, is that in heaven, the promise is that God will renew all things. And so I think that's why God is able to stay calm in the midst of the storm, is because we think about the right here and the right now, and God's saying, well, I'm, I'm thinking about the whole big picture. And I need you to know that no matter how your life ends, I'm going to tell you that I'm in control of how the whole story ends. And at the end of all things, I'm going to redeem it and renew it and bring about a new heaven and a new earth. And that is a powerful thing to put your hope in. Because what it says is that even then, when my life seems like it's falling apart, God is not falling apart. And whatever it is that seems to crash and crumble, God has the ability to remake it, renew it, sometimes make it alive again. Can I get an amen to that? There's an old nursery rhyme about Humpty Dumpty. Y'all remember that? It says Humpty Dumpty sat on a great wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. But all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty back together again. You ever ask yourself the question like, why'd you call the king's men? Why'd you call the king's horses? Somebody should have called the king. That is who had the ability to redeem and fix and renew all things. Can I get an amen to that? That is where our hope. So our past, man, we just take that out with the trash. If anything, we utilize it for, for, for God's purpose. 
Because that's what we're focusing on right here, right now in the present is the God's purpose for my life. But if I have to glimpse into the future and wonder what the future is like, I may not know all the details, but I know that in the end, God is going to renew and redeem all things. Amen, church. I love you so much. I hope you're full of hope this morning. God bless you guys. I will see you Sunday morning live or online. God bless you.